What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and in this video I'm going to show you one of the best, if not the best, or what I consider the best Sorcerer PvP builds that you can possibly run at level 100. This build does everything, gets super tanky, super mobile, does a lot of damage, a lot of fun to play, and then you can also use this exact PvP build in PvE so you're not always flip-flopping between Paragon boards. So, without further ado guys, let's hop into the video. Hey, welcome back guys. We're just going to hop straight into it. I'm going to have some PvP footage in the background to show you guys the effectiveness of the build. Now, this is updated after the surprise patch we got today on the 18th of 1.1.0a. I'm not going to lie, guys. They did nerf the Sork pretty bad. They nerfed Devouring Blaze heavily, and they also nerfed the control aspect, which is what we really relied on for our damage. As always, I'll have a link to this build down in the description below. And while you're there, do not forget to like and sub to the channel. We are going to be pumping out the PvP content. I do stream four or five days a week, so if you guys want to be notified for that, you know what to do. So we're going to take a look at the aspects first, why I feel are the most important ones to have on the build, and then we're going to take a look at the skill tree, and then as well as the Paragon board, I have timestamps for everything down in the video. Now, the first aspect we're taking a look at is aspect of might this is going to give you a 20 percent damage mitigation for six seconds when using a basic attack your arc lash counts as a basic attack next is the chest piece and this is also the only unique item we're running on the build and that is ringma of the infinite essentially it turns your teleport into an aoe pull slash stun okay and it has a lot of synergy on the build for example one of the enchantments we're running is the teleport enchantment so every single time you use your quote-unquote evade it counts as a teleport so you may ask yourself well that's only like on a six second charge maybe you want to run the boots that give you maximum charges that'd be pretty strong right no actually you want to run the boots that every single time you use an attack and uh, this is an intrinsic trait on the boot you can't like re-roll this or anything every single time you use an attack it reduces your evade cooldown by 1.2 seconds and that's how you see me here in the background hopping around so much and getting these perma cc stuns and i'm literally teleporting all around the map so you have to have that and you also have to have the boots which we will cover more in depthly here in just a moment okay next we're running aspect of retribution now this did get nerfed unfortunately so now it only increases your damage done by 20 percent to stun enemies instead of 40%. Uh, that is a bit of a bummer, but we have to squeeze as much damage as possible out of this build, so there we go. Next is going to be our pants. This is Snowville Aspect Rogues. I don't, I don't know how to put this lightly for you guys. You cannot beat a rogue. You cannot even beat an average rogue unless they're an absolute potato. Rogues kind of avoided the, the band wave of nerfs and they they just they do so much damage man and you can't do any damage to them they just heal through everything and i if rogues are a top tier you can't beat them what the hoda barb was last patch and now the rogue is kind of assumed that that alpha predator level pvp class so the only way to really deal with that class is if you run the snowville aspect which is going to give you unstoppable after casting your ice armor you gotta have it um you're probably still gonna die but at least this will uh, allow you to get away <laughs> Uh, next is our boots. We're running Exploiter's Aspect on this. Now, the Exploiter's Aspect did get nerfed from 50% down to 40% at max, and essentially you do 40% extra damage to people who are unstoppable, and that's pretty much most builds nowadays, okay? Um, next, we're running the Stormwell's Aspect on our weapon. Now, this is going to increase the vulnerable damage that we do to targets while we have a barrier. Absolutely have to have it. We're running the elementals aspect on our amulet because it is going to increase the effectiveness of this by 50%. Essentially, this is increasing our attack speed from our basic attacks, which is very, very important. Muy importante. Next is aspect of control. This is going to increase the damage that we do to immobilize, stun, or frozen enemies by 35%. What it used to be is that you could triple dip into this. You would run the flame guard aspect for the immobilize. You could stun them with raiment and your teleport, and then you could freeze them with Nova, and this would triple dip, and you could just, just absolutely just melt people. You melt bosses, melt players. It was incredible. But now, unfortunately, you only get the 35%, just the one stack, not all three stacks. Next, we're running Edge Master's Aspect. So since we're not using any of our resource pool, this is a flat 20% damage increase because we always have 100% mana pool. So there's 20% extra damage. And last but not least, we're running the Conceited Aspect. This is going to give us a 25% damage increase while we have a barrier active, which is literally all the time. Every single time you use your evade charge, you get a barrier which is equivalent to 30% of your life and you're getting that barrier literally every like two to three seconds which is absolutely incredible it makes you so so tanky this patch 
Now just a few things to note about aspects before we get into the skill tree itself as well as the enchantment. So I'm not running disobedience on this build because armor doesn't really help you until you hit the upper echelons of armor like 9200 that's when your damage mitigation really pops off at a cap of 85 percent unless you can hit 9200 armor all the time consistently i highly suggest don't even run armor on your sorcerer and unless you can really help it it's much better to stack maximum health because all of your wards well most of your wards that you get are based off your maximum health if you do this correctly and if you follow the link i have for you guys in the description you should be sitting around 15,000 health okay Okay, going over the skills, so we're running one point into Firebolt just so we can get that ever so important passive. Yes, Devouring Blaze did get a nerf, but it is the only way for us to really increase our damage a lot and also take a lot of damage and mitigation once we go over the Paragon board. So we got five points in the Arc Lash, one into Enhance Arc Lash, one into Glinting Arc Lash. You'll want uh, one point into Charge Bolts, into Enhanced Charge Bolts, and then one point into Destructive Charge Bolts. Just make sure you, whoever you're focusing, their damage is reduced by 25%, which is going to tank you up. Now I do have max points in the Flame Shield. The reason I have max points in the Flame Shield, and I also have a plus three defense all skills on my amulet just so I can get to the 11 ring. The reason I want this up to 11 ring is because instead of having an immortality shield for two seconds, this bolsters it all the way up to three seconds, which is really, really powerful. On teleport, you'll always want to get the shimmering teleport to make sure you get the damage mitigation. Now I do have frost and we're pretty much maxed out. This is how we're going to burst people. So having this on a lower cooldown means we can line up those burst opportunities more often. Now you'll want to go with enhanced frost nova and then mystical frost nova just so we can proc that vulnerability damage. Uh, you'll want to go with align to the elements. Now this did get a buff. Um, I still am going to put one point into this because when you're in PvP, you're getting hit by elites all the time. So you're not really getting massive dividends for maxing this out. But however, you will want maximum ranks into protection. This is how we are going to get that ward all the time, literally every two seconds. So using cooldown grants 30% of your maximum health, which is 4,000 in my case, as a barrier for five seconds, or excuse me, for three seconds, which is really, really strong. So you pretty much always have a 30% a 30 damage mitigation showed up on you at, at all times. So even though Devouring Blaze did get nerfed, we are still going to spec into it. Now on my amulet, I do have a plus three to Devouring Blaze. I still think that is really strong. So you will get a 42% increase to your critical strike damage against burning enemies. And your enemies will be burning all the time. Now I did put one point into ball lightning just so I can get the enhanced ball lightning. So this is going to increase its rate of damage by 200% based on your attack speed. Now this is kind of a flex spot. You don't necessarily have to put these two points here. If you don't want to, you can potentially remove these and put them elsewhere. Passives, you want static discharge into shocking impact. Every time you stun an enemy, you deal an additional lightning damage to them. Um, we're stunning literally all the time. Okay. Uh, coming over into our passes, you do want to put 1.2 permafrost and then 3 into horfrost because when you go in for your burst combo, ideally you'll be aligning it around Nova and this is going to increase your damage by 18%. Now I do have 2 points uh, into our ultimate which is unstable currents and then only 1 point into prime unstable um, currents just make sure we can get that extra attack speed. Attack speed is king on this. The most attack speed you can have on this build, the better. Okay, we're not really too much worried about the uh the third portion of this because crackling energy really doesn't do anything for us anyway okay when it comes to the passives you want three into course and currents just to make sure we get those crits popping as much as often the reason you want a high critical ch uh, critical chance is because when our clash critically hits it actually hits for a second time so on this build i only have around 33 percent critical strike chance you can potentially get a, that up to around 41 percent so the more crit the better on this build it's going to function more attack speed you have and the more crit chance you have the better the build is going to perform and then of course we have three points into electrocution and then our key passive we are running vires or veyers mastery and one more thing to note before we hop over into the paragon board is that on your main hand on your off hand you desperately need the basic skill damage increase. So have this on your main hand and your off hand, as well as having a dagger. You have to have a dagger because it has the intrinsic trait to give you 30% damage to close enemies. I see some people run around with wands on an arc lash build and you're doing it wrong, fellas. And before we hop into the Paragon board, it would be very disingenuous of me to take credit for this Paragon board. Now, this is pretty much min-max by, by my buddy Chillabit here. He's pretty much taught me everything I know about the Arclight Sorcerer. So um, he actually does have a YouTube channel. He just started posting recently. I will also have a link 
down to his channel in the description so uh, go give him some love as well he's put a lot of blood sweat and tears into this paragon board now because of the most recent changes i've had to alter it a little bit i've had to change some of the glyphs around but the path is still ultimately the same okay so hopping over into the paragon board so the very first glyph we're running is going to be exploit uh your next board you want to branch into is going to be a frigid fates you'll want to go up and grab this socket going going to slot reinforced here we'll go over into the east which is going to be our third board this is the burning instincts you want to rotate it to where you can get the glyph slot here which is going to be destruction this is going to help us offset the nerf to devouring blaze they did change destruction instead of core and mastery abilities getting the critical strike damage now all of your abilities get their critical strike damage okay heading north into the fourth board you want to grab the glyph a flame feeder is going to increase the damage to burning enemies which is pretty much everyone all the time we're going to further go north into your enchantment master board which is your fifth board and you're going to grab imbider now this is a very slept on glyph i did not believe chilobo when he told me to use this but boy does it make a difference the increased effectiveness on your potions is huge because in pvp they have an intrinsic cooldown and you're able to go to a 75.6 damage while healthy and you're pretty much always healthy because you always have reward now all of these glyphs i have are only level 15 you could potentially get these all the way up to 21 at level 21 which is going to further push this damage okay so after we slot in bottom we're gonna go all the way back down to our third board which is our burning instincts passive and then we're gonna branch this bad boy off into go south and this is going to be our sixth board to where we're gonna slot control this is going to give us effectively 100 percent increased damage to crowd control enemies and then we're running this one just so we can also pick up the critical strike damage rare node now you don't have to run any additional stats on this build like all stats or dexterity or willpower because you hit almost every single one of the secondary effect nodes there is one node that you are not able to reach i cannot find it offhand but essentially you're just missing out on a 10 percent increase to your non-physical damage which is an added to bucket yeah here it is right here which is the elemental balance so if you really wanted to you could run some dexterity on your gloves maybe or maybe even your boots to get this up to 530 i just at the time of making this you know since this is an added to bucket i'm not really too worried about it and uh, neither should you to be honest Thank you so much for watching until the end, guys. The YouTube algorithm lords absolutely love the view time. I appreciate each and every single one of you. You are the totes and goats, the bees knees, the bomb.com. All right. If you want to help support the channel, the best way to do so is with a like and sub. Or you can take it a step further like these lovely sausages on my YouTube as well as, as my Patreon. You guys are absolutely amazing. And thanks so much for going above and beyond help supporting me and the channel. I really want to turn this into something. There's going to be a lot more Diablo PvP content coming forward. And also a lot of PvE as well. It's kind of hard to do one without the other. You know what I mean? I hope you guys found something of value in this video. And if you have any further questions about the build or really anything Diablo PvP related, just let me know down in the comments or hit me up in the Discord. I try my best to respond to each and every single message that I see and also the comments. So yeah, with all that being said, guys, I hope to see some of you all out in the fields of hatred and y'all have a great day. Peace.